Hi, fourth graders. I'm back for our next virtual science lab, this time on force and motion. We're going to talk a lot about Newton's laws of motion. But before we start, I want to make sure that you're looking up at night at the sky. We talked all about space earlier in the year. Venus right now is so bright in the sky because it's really close to Earth. And I want to let you know about an event on May 16th. Make sure right after sunset, sunset, you look up at the sky and you're going to see Venus and Jupiter and a crescent moon that forms a smiley face in the sky, May 16th, right after sunset. Let's hope it's clear for that event. Now before we get started on force in motion, make sure that you know that there is a form or quiz to fill out after this video. So watch it all the way through, maybe take some notes and fill out the form that will go to your homeroom teachers. So before we really start, we need to talk about mass versus weight. I have two balls, one is a lacrosse ball and one is a wiffle ball. Weight includes gravity. So if I were to weigh myself on earth, and I weighed, let's just say 200 kilograms, and then I went to the moon and weighed myself, I would weigh a lot less because the gravitational force is less. But my mass would be the same whether on Earth or the moon because I'm still made of the same stuff. So who was this scientist named Newton? He was a physicist that lived in the late 1600s and early 1700s, and he came up with those three laws of motion. So we're going to focus a lot now on the first law, which is the law of inertia. The first law of motion says that an object at rest will stay at rest unless acted on by an outside force. What force was that? I hope you all said gravity. Gravity is a really important force when we're talking about laws of motion. The same law says that an object in motion will stay in motion unless acted on by an outside force. So I'm going to toss this ball, I'm going to roll it across the grass. Ah, it stopped. Think about some of the forces that acted on that ball to make it stop. Now remember that first law says an object in motion stays in motion unless acted on by an outside force. So when I tossed the ball, why didn't it go all the way around the earth and come back and hit me in the back of the leg? Well, friction for one, the friction of the grass underneath the ball slowed it down, gravity forcing down on the ball, and the third one we didn't see, but it probably would have stopped because of the bushes or the fence. So sometimes there's an obstacle in the way that it's gonna hit that will stop it. Sarah is back to help me demonstrate what I call gravity beads. So they are going to demonstrate Newton's first and second law, but we'll talk about why in a little bit. Sarah, watch carefully. Sarah's gonna demonstrate another example of Newton's first law. Will those coins stay at rest? Sarah? This little trick was a result of unequal forces. Which force do you think was stronger? The force of the card being flicked out from under the coins or the force of gravity on the coins? Obviously, it was the force of gravity. The coins stayed at rest until acted on by an outside force. In this case, gravity was strongest. A stegosaurus is riding a jeep. Watch what happens when a wall gets in the way. It sure looks like the Stegosaurus didn't know anything about Newton's laws of motion. If he had known, he would have worn a seatbelt. All this talk about force and motion has made me hungry. Newton has three laws of motion. We're only on the first one. So I think I'll have a little lunch. I've got an apple and some apple juice and a nice tablecloth to go with it. Oh wait, maybe I don't really need this tablecloth. Ta-da! So here to show us more about Newton's second law is my son, Sam. Sam's behind the camera a lot, 
but this is his first fourth grade appearance in front of the camera. Sam is going to do some demonstrations. Now, before we talk about the second law of motion, we need to understand what acceleration is. Acceleration is the change in speed over time. Force equals mass times acceleration. So Sam has two balls. He's got a lacrosse ball and a wiffle ball. Which one has greater mass, Sam? The yellow lacrosse ball. Okay, so it's definitely heavier, denser. We're gonna test out the second law, which says force equals mass times acceleration. So how are you going to demonstrate, Sam? I'm gonna hit these two balls of unequal mass with the same amount of force and see which one goes further. Awesome. First, the wiffle ball. Well, it got stopped by the shrub, but we can see how far it went. Next, the lacrosse ball. All right, it dropped a lot sooner than the wiffle ball. So with the same force, the lacrosse ball didn't go as far because it has a greater mass. Sam is back for another demonstration on the second law of motion. Force equals mass times acceleration. So we're gonna play a little game of shuffleboard called the lid skid. He's got a lid and a yardstick and his goal, back up a little Sam, is to skid the lid so it just goes to the first line and stops there. Go ahead, Sam. Oh, well, pretty close. Okay, so Sam is moving the first line out of the way. Sam, what are you gonna do now? Your goal is to reach the second line, which is farther with your lid. Now the lid has the same amount of mass. What are you gonna do differently? I'm gonna use more force. More force, okay, for more acceleration. Ah, and he hit the second line. Okay, to test Newton's second law again, I've set up a track. I've got balls with different masses. We're gonna take the mass in a minute. And I've got a small car at the end of the track. So remember that spring scale that we used last time in the Simple Machines video? I'm using it again to find the mass of the different balls. Now, weight and mass are the same on Earth. So I'm gonna be using a spring scale to take the weight of the balls. I'm putting each ball in a plastic bag. That mass of the plastic bag is really, it doesn't really even count. So the first ball, which is a wiffle ball, is about 20 grams. The second ball, which is a tennis ball, is about 50 grams. So it has more mass than the first one. And that yellow lacrosse ball is back. It's mass is 150 grams. So this one has the highest mass, second highest is the tennis ball, and last but not least is the wiffle ball. This is how the experiment's gonna go. I'm gonna send each ball that has a different mass down the ramp. The car is positioned at the same distance from the bottom of the ramp each time, and we're gonna see if it makes a difference. Does the mass determine how far the car will go? greatest mass pushed the car the farthest, the ball with the least mass didn't push it nearly as far. Newton's third law of motion says to every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. So let's see between Sam and his dad which one has the greater force and the greater reaction. Oh! <laughs> Maybe the dog. One. The third law states to every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. This is a Newton's cradle. What do you think will happen when I pull one ball back to hit the other four balls? So in that case, one ball was pulled out, so one ball bounced out with the same force. So what do you think will happen if I pull two back with a similar force? two balls bounce out on the other side. Now, you notice they don't keep going. What force do you think it is that makes them come to a stop? 
Let's try three balls. And what do you think will happen with four? Again, it's the same force hitting each time, but it does eventually come to a stop because of the force of gravity. Let's look at the gravity beads again. Have you figured out what makes them continue to fall out of the jar? If you think about the first and second law of motion, once we pull on the beads, the beads stay in motion until they're acted on by a stronger force. So the force of gravity pulling them out is stronger than the force keeping them in the jar. At the same time, the second law says force equals mass times acceleration. So they're accelerating faster and faster all the time as they come out of the jar, just like this. Fourth graders, I hope you enjoyed this video learning all about force and motion and Newton's three laws of motion. I sure enjoyed making it for you. Thank you to all my helpers and my family. I hope to see you all again real soon. Bye, I miss you.